Hello everybody, Dr. F. Scott Field here, and I'd like to introduce you to our newest sponsor. The NPTE Final Frontier is the review course that I wish was around when I took the board exam. For those of you who know my story, it took me a handful of times to pass that exam, and quite frankly, I really wish I had an, a, an exam review course around, uh, just like the NPTE Final Frontier. Uh, check out their website, npteff.com, and use the code HET at checkout for 10% off to all of our listeners and fans. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Dawn Brown, and I am bringing you another Teach Me Something Tuesday. Today, we're going to talk about tips for recommendation letters. We all need recommendation letters for admission into a physical therapy program, for an application for a scholarship, or for that first or new job. Often gathered in clusters of three, these letters are viewed as a source of information, describing, for instance, your strengths or your weaknesses, your knowledge of physical therapy, your commitment to, let's say, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belongingness, your learning styles, your teaching styles, and your ability to work with others. However, you must recognize that all recommendation letters are not created equal. It is not enough to approach a professor or an employer and simply ask for a letter of recommendation. You have to consider several things in advance. How well does the person you're asking for this letter know you personally and professionally? Do they have enough insight into your character, your values, or even your work ethic? If the answer is no, and you value a recommendation letter from this person, you have to find ways to develop a relationship with them. Does this person lend credibility to the position for which you're applying? If you're applying to a physical therapy program, is this person a professor? If you're applying to a physical therapy job, is this person a clinician? Think about how you asked for this letter of recommendation. Did you simply say, hi, Dr. John Doe, I'm applying for a job and I would like you to write a letter of recommendation for me. This is standard, basic, and quite frankly, not effective. Or did you ask, hi, Dr. John Doe, I'm applying for ABC Physical Therapy Scholarship and given my relationship with you, are you able to write a letter that highly recommends me for this scholarship? Remember that it's also a good idea to follow up with a written formal letter of recommendation request for anyone that you verbally ask for a request. Consider what material you provided the person to supplement the information that they may write about you in the letter of recommendation. Supply them with your resume, a copy of the scholarship criteria, and the job description. This makes it easier for the writer to highlight your accomplishments and personal strengths as they relate to the position for which you are applying. When did you ask for this letter of recommendation? You need to ask early and give ample time to the writer to spend adequate time and attention to your letter, especially if you're asking them at peak times, during the college admission cycles, after graduations, or even during the holidays. Try to give at least one month advance notice and follow up to the person that's going to write this letter. And then remind them about two weeks before the letter's due about your timeline for receiving this letter. Trust me, nothing is worse than receiving a letter of recommendation request a few days before it's due. In these situations, I am more than likely to decline writing this person a letter of recommendation. Also note that Poor recommendation letters stem from students or faculty or clinicians not taking the time to screen whom they would like to write this letter. A poorly written recommendation letter can actually backfire. During the physical therapy application process, for instance, a poor recommendation letter can result in the loss of points toward your total point count that determines whether or not you get admitted into a physical therapy program. Trust me, I know this all too well as an admissions reviewer. I have read countless poorly written recommendation letters that were so generic that I wondered if the writer even knew the applicant. Poor re recommendation letters will depict the applicant as being generic, just like everyone else who's applying. 
And be aware that some poorly written letters reflect bias, such as gender bias, wherein women are portrayed as being less intelligent and more compassionate, and men are portrayed in the letter as being just the opposite. So stay on the lookout for that. If possible, review the letters of recommendation that are written on your behalf and provide some feedback to the writer. If not possible to view these letters ahead of time, then make sure that you ask the writer if they would write a letter that highly recommends you for a given position and point to the key characteristics that you possess. You want your letter of recommendation tailored to highlight you and your abilities, your capabilities, and even your motivations as they relate specifically to the program, the scholarship, or the job for which you are applying. And always remember to thank the person who wrote the letter of recommendation. You never know when you might need that person again. And don't fret if the person that you're asking to write you a letter of recommendation declines to write you that letter. I would much rather tell a student or a prospective employee that I cannot write a letter on their behalf due to not knowing them well enough or not being the most appropriate person to write that letter. I would much rather not write a generic letter that will jeopardize your chances of admission, receiving a scholarship, or getting that job. I hope that this information on tips for recommendation letters was helpful, and we will see you on the next Teach Me Something Tuesday.